The marriage ended because I got very insecure about myself sexually in the bedroom and performing sex with him. So I just couldn't take it anymore, and I asked Christopher to leave. Before I got married, I was just stud. I dated hundreds of women. I loved sex. I saw something in her, and I fell in love with her on the first scene. Is that right? Yeah. What about her made you fall in love? Her height. I like short women. Ask him his nickname. What's your nickname? Big Freaky. Mm. Ooh. All of the women that Christopher knows, all of the women had nice bodies, breasts, you know that? Bigger than me. Oh, 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 it don't take too many people to be bigger than you, honey. He didn't really trust me. I didn't really trust him. No, well, I should think me. not. Neither one of you can trust each other. She still got a whole bag from my first husband. You have to take the time to get rid of him. And you can't worry about what your ex-husband did, what he isn't doing. You got to take care of you and figure out what's going on with me. Gina Ham says she was insecure and forced Christopher to leave. And now she wants him to pay spousal support in today's session of Divorce Court. All rise. Court is now in session. Judge Maybelline Ephraim presiding. You may be seated. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. This is the matter of Gina Ham versus Christopher Ham. After a year of marriage, <laughs> whole year, my goodness. You want a divorce. You have one child. You're asking him for spousal support, Mrs. Ham. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. Okay, what went wrong? Now, this is a year of marriage, but about three or four months of living together. I'm living together, <clears throat> actually, yes. Um, I met Christopher at a club. Um, they, he was around a lot of women. He um, was in the middle of the dance floor, five women around him. You know, he was all you know, hugged up dancing. And um, like I said, he was around the women and, you know, hugged up. And, and I um, went down to him and I, I spoke to him and we had what words. With five said, women around you? Yeah, I, he moved them out the way for me. He, right, he moved them out the way moved for me. mountains for he, me. He moved them hey. out the way, so I felt important. I felt important. You know, uh, he moved them out the way. Uh, we started dancing. You know, he was holding me short as I am, tall as he is, you know, hugging me, dancing. And um, it, he, was, he was strong and holding me. I was about to say, all it. that felt real secure. It felt good. I ain't going to lie. It felt good. Mm -hmm. It felt real good. Like a big old bear hug, huh? I, I, and, and that's what I needed. You know, at, at that time, that's, that's what I needed. Um, and we left together that night. Um, he asked me if I wanted to go and eat dinner with him, and I told him I, I would be more than glad to. Um, we talked and we talked. Um, I, I um, let him know that I had, um, the night before, had went on a sexual binge, and I had, you know, had sex with... Who's a sexual binge? Um, <laughs> That's a new one, too. I had, I had had sex with, with two people the night before I met him. Oh. And um, I had, well, let me explain. I had just... I had been out, I was married. This is my second marriage. And mm -hmm. my first marriage, I was married to a Muslim. And mm -hmm. I was in God for three to four years. And I was very, you know, closed in and isolated. And when, like I said, when I met him, like, I am free. Yeah, exactly. I'm free. I can shine now. Free I can means you can just put on the clothes and take off the, the covering. But my God, no, you me, just took it a little too far. For me, I took, I took free to the door, past the door, out the gate, Whew. down the alley, around the corner. Yana, and, um, Yana, can I say something, please? Yeah. Help me out. Okay, I'm going to say something here. Before I met my wife, like I said, I was a stud. Uh-huh. I dated hundreds of women. I love sex. Excellent his nickname. <laughs> Asking his nickname. What's your nickname? Big Freaky. Mm. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I know what that means. You had to explain that one. <laughs> but I told her about my, about my past. But when we got together, I told her I was a one-woman man. And what made you do that? Because I saw something in her, and I fell in love with her when I first seen her. Is that right? Yeah. What about her made you fall in love? Her height. I like short women. <laughs> so you like short women. Yeah. So that turned you on. Uh-huh. What mm -hmm. else? Not to mention when she told you about her freaky past. <laughs> <laughs> well, everybody got some yeah. freaky, I see. That turned you on. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. And just two days before, you said, let me see if I can top that, huh? Not really, but I'm saying I wanted to settle down. Oh. Okay, I wanted to settle down. You were ready to I was end ready. the stud life. Yeah, settle down, uh -huh. have a kid, get married. So what happened? I guess her insecurities of my past 
messed everything up because she went crazy. What do you mean by that? She didn't trust me. She accused me. And it really got on my nerves. I told her when we got together, I stopped everything. But she didn't trust you? She didn't trust me. So every time you left home and came back, she was accusing? Yes. He, he was the one that told me. Okay, so me. what did you find out? What she did said I find all out? you did was you didn't trust him. Before we got married, we made an agreement. We wouldn't have any new friends. Okay, before we got married. Any new friends? No, no, meaning what Your I mean, what I mean is, Honor, what I mean please? is, we, before we got married, we knew everybody, we knew this was my friend, this is my cousin, so forth, so forth. It wouldn't be any new people coming into this relationship from nowhere. So why would you say, when you were getting married, no new friends? Because we, because of the way I, mean, I, I mean, into the marriage, I don't mean other relationships. Of, I said friends. No, because you know. we, I, I didn't, he didn't really trust me. I didn't really trust him. No, well, she I should trust think me. not. Neither one of you can trust each other. So, I mean, she so you didn't want him to name a big freak. So you didn't I want just, him to talk to anyone no, else? No, I didn't say I didn't want him to no, talk to no. anybody. I didn't she, mind she having friends let me speak. as long as I, I knew who they were. If I had old friends, she wouldn't let me speak to I've had old friends. Uh-huh. And she asked me, who's, I ain't gonna say what she said out of her mouth, but who's that? Like, it's a friend, old so friend. So all of a sudden, you had to forget everybody. I had to the forget everybody. You, you I had to forget speak everybody. To your friends, but it's how you speak to your friends. How so you how doing? Did he speak to hey, the... how you been? I'm sitting there. He holding a conversation five or ten minutes on the bus coming from Atlantic City with this female. Forgot his wife was sitting next to him. How did, and why, forgot how did he forget? forget me? Ask his wife. Ask him. So why couldn't you introduce yourself? I didn't want to sit Judge. out there and make myself Judge. look stupid in front of that no, woman. No, you I'm don't look stupid. Judge. Hey, hey, hold on. No, let me give her a little life lesson. Please you, do. You don't have to look stupid. Real simple. Husband is on the bus sitting next to you. He met, met an old friend. They start to talk. In the middle of the conversation, somehow you say, oh, excuse me. We've never met. <laughs> My name is da-da-da-da-da, and I am his wife. I'm so pleased to meet you. Didn't catch your name. What's your name? Simple. You don't have to act a fool. Simple. The divorce court continues. He never told me I was enough for him sexually. He never told me that. So you wanted him to scream a little loud? Just a little bit. Is your marriage ending because your spouse's family kept interfering? Call us at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at www.divorcecourt.com. Divorce court continues in the case of Gina Han, who says her marriage to Christopher is ending because she was insecure and accused him of cheating. All of the women that Christopher knows, all of the women have nice bodies, breasts, you know, that bigger than me. But I, I, and I, I, but I, I don't I, take too many I people to be bigger than you. I, I know. So, I mean, I was very insecure with myself yeah. and my being and who I was. But, Yana, and, I was and with Especially her. with him having all of her. these women. But you knew he was a ladies' man. When you yes, met him, what was going on? Surrounded by five women. See, when you went downstairs and he started dancing with you, you thought you were hot stuff. Probably. But then you cooled off. Yeah, I used to. And got him. insecure when you saw him with women. But that told you that's his personality. Women are attracted to him, just like you were attracted to him. But did he marry them? No. He married you. So if you were attracted to him, why do you think other women wouldn't be attracted to him? Because he's a big freak. He always talks. I mean, everybody knows but what I'm, he does. That's my point. If you were attracted to him, you think you're the only one? Okay. I hope not. So his world was supposed to stop all of a sudden because he met you? No. That no. That was an unrealistic expectation. Go on, Mr. Hale. But I want to get back to our marriage, okay? Yeah, what about your marriage? All right. I come home from work. Yeah. She tells me, I think you should pack your stuff and leave because we're not going in the same direction. I'm like, hey, man, when we got together, I had my own place, you had your own place. We came here together. Okay, so why you want to put me out? Let's work it out. But, so, it's like, it was hurting me, so I just like, if she don't want me, it's time for me to go. And you left? And I left. And now, did you ever see him with anyone else? No. Did he ever do anything with anyone else? He used to go out every weekend at, no, no, I, I didn't mind him going out, right? But when he would come home, you know, I, 
in the back of my mind, you know, I will always think, you know, because he likes to dance, you know, and he knows a lot of people. And, and some women dancing. don't respect. No, some women don't respect the fact of you being married. Right. And I knew we were already well, having problems. It takes two to and I you. felt very insecure when he would go and out and come home. And you ran him away because of your my insecurities. insecurities. You didn't want him to go out by himself. Look, no. when you're married, you need time no, alone. I did not mind him going out by himself. But if he went, he couldn't dance. No, when he would come home and, you know, he would just, he just wouldn't be himself when he came home. It just, he just wasn't himself. Let me tell you something. You didn't know the man long enough to know what himself, himself was. Really was. You didn't really know what, that whether he was being himself or not. Because you didn't take time to get to know what he was all about and what made him tick. Well, you didn't know if that was normal or abnormal. You didn't know regular behavior versus irregular behavior. Because you were in the bed and on him just like that. Well, he was with me as well. Vice versa. But that's my whole point. Neither one of you knew what each of you was made of, what made you tick, what you liked, what you didn't like, what you were all about, your, yeah. your likes, your dislikes, your strong. differences, your indifferences. You didn't know anything. All you knew was we make mad sex together. But, Your Honor, I was trying to get to know her. I was. Sounds like it. I was trying but, but, to do my but best. But just the same thing that turned her on to you turned her off to you. Because now she's like, well, I he's a know. big man. He's I nice looking. Enough. He but got no, beautiful hair. I'm not the only one I that likes him. I ain't enough. But, Your Honor. Who said you weren't enough? That's he you. never told me. He Yana, never said, regret, oh, baby, I, I enjoy when we spend a time. You know, he never, he never told me I was enough for him sexually. He never told me that. Well, he didn't need to tell you that before he married you. And so why all of a sudden get to bother you? Because at least his knee, you know, his toes would curl up. I would get some type of response. <laughs> some type of response. How you know where his toes is curling in the Because I look at him. I look at this thing. I do. I look at my, I, because I like to get feedback. I like to know that you're no, happy. He I knew gave I was feedback. happy. I gave a feedback. Oh, he knew, the I neighbors knew I was happy. You yell about both sides. Okay, knew I was happy. So you wanted him to scream a little louder? Just a little bit. <laughs>
Nothing about the heart. But see, you can't, you can't carry the baggage from the last marriage into the old marriage, but you have to take the time to get rid of it because you start to say the same things. And when people do a little action that reminds you of the past, then you start to blaming. But most of the time it's our own problem and you can't worry about what your ex-husband did, what he isn't doing. You got to take care of you and figure out what's going on with me. When he and I first get, got together, I knew that I had my issues with insecurities. Every day he came home from work, I always, me, me and my, my son, we always meet him at the door. Hi, daddy, dinner ready, bath water running. You know, um, I gave him my all. That you know, all that I knew, that, all I knew that how to do. Well, it's only been 12 months. You guys keep saying the beginning. My point is, this is still the beginning. Most marriages don't start to jail, and the two people don't really start to come together and get a groove going on without the fights and the complaints and the problems for what you say, Joe. How many years? A couple, two, three years sometimes. Yeah. Can I say first, first, first part of the marriage, as my brother used to say, is getting to know each other and trying to get used to the idea of sharing your space with somebody else. And that was one of my <laughs> That's major the first part issues. Of it. That's it. Got to get used it. to sharing space. your space. That's why I Then think you, you I have to deal with all your little idiosyncrasies. I want the toilet tissue on the road. <laughs> I want you to put... <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I get that's too cold. Right. I want the heat at 70. No, that's I want right. it at 55. And you, that's, right. that's the first year. Um, you don't hang your clothes up right. You don't iron my clothes right. Put the toothbrush back in the toothbrush holder. That's the first year of marriage. You're going through all those kinds of little things. The divorce court continues. Well, all you got to say is I take it back. Just tell him. I, I begged him. I Just begged him. Just tell him again. I take it back. Jeez. Come home. Kids need you. They ain't got no other daddy but you. You know that. Divorce court continues in the case of Gina Han, who says she accused Christopher of cheating because she thought she didn't satisfy him sexually. Even after we separated to this day, Christopher has keys to my house. I don't care when he comes and goes. I want to work out my marriage, you know? But I you mean- You to give it a chance? She told me to leave. I understand that. I she was, regrets it now. I she didn't know what time. else to do. I sure didn't. I didn't, and I told him over and over. He, I asked him, okay, that day- She's 27, you're what? 36. You got a few years on her. That day that he, that he said he was leaving, right? He said he was leaving at three well, o'clock. all you got to say is I take it back. Just tell him. I, I begged him. I Just begged tell him, him again. I take it back. Please. Come home. <laughs> Kids need you. They ain't got no other daddy but you. You know that. Forget this. Forget This is not about the kids. No. You all got to work this out. Now, don't make a bag too hard now. I'm not making that bag. Oh. I used to go to his house bag. every day. All I can do is, is suggest. Will you give it some thought? I'll give it some thought. Will you try counseling for a few months? You can always get a divorce. I mean, you can always yeah, get I'll a divorce. I'll try to counsel. Can I say something? I'm going to let you all go talk to each other. Oh. You've talked enough to me. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to let you talk to each other. Because I'm not going to give you any spousal support. It's too short. You only live together three months. You don't have a lifestyle. You, you, you haven't developed that yet. Okay. You really haven't. There is no basis for me to award you spousal support. Now you need to do a little courting and a little dating. What you should have done before I, you got married. He don't want to go nowhere with Just me. Just be quiet. <laughs> Close your mouth. And you need to stop saying the negative things. You don't want me. You don't like me. You don't tell me this. You don't tell me that. When you go into counseling, they're going to tell you a way to get the message over that's not negative. So you say the same thing, but he doesn't hear it as a nag and a negative statement. He hears, this is what would please me. Not, you don't do this for me. You don't do that for me. That never gets a positive result. All right? It's not always what you say. It's how you say it. Okay, court's adjourned. All rise. Parties may leave the courtroom. Now they get married and get interested in each other because of the fine frame of a man he was. Yeah. And just as she was attracted to him, now she's, she's nervous over other women. But it sounds like she's the one that brought all the problems on. She's nervous.
I'm, I'm not sure he has it in his heart to do it. I'm not either. Well, I'm not maybe sure. Maybe he'll give it a shot. Because now he feels, but you know. He says, I, I did everything I was supposed to do. He feels used and he feels neglected right. and, and his ego and pride. But yeah. sometimes we have to step back from pride. Sure. My marriage is breaking up because I had to quit my job so she could go back to work. She leaves me with the kids, with no money, no job, no car, nothing. I was a housewife. James was working. So when I stayed out one night, only one night, till 7 o'clock in the morning, he decided to kick me out. I couldn't go out. I wasn't going out. If I did, I'd have to be home at a certain time. What time did you have to be at home? I had to be home by 10. Oh, my goodness. My granddaughters have a longer curfew than that. And what time did you have to leave before dark? Exactly. And how often did you get to go out? Once a month? Once a year. Once a year? Oh, Once a year. No. Oh, I my go goodness. Out. I said, if you don't want to be here, I don't want you here then. You know what she tells me? She tells me, make sure I get my Tupperware when I leave. <laughs> oh, no. That's all she wanted was the Tupperware. Joanne Conley says she took back control of her life from her husband, James, and then he kicked her out. Now he wants her to pay him child support. In today's session of Divorce Court. All rise. Court is now in session. Judge Maybelline Ephraim presiding. You may be seated. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. This is the matter of Joanne Connolly versus James Connolly. And I'm advised that you've been married for about six years. You have three children. You're divorcing. And now, Mr. Connolly, you want your wife to pay you child support. Is that right? For the yes, three I kids? do, Your Honor. Okay. So what happened? How do you get the kids? What's going on? Why did this marriage end after six years, Mrs. Connolly? Ma'am, James kept me as a slave. Okay, oh I was God. isolated. That's a slave? That's yes, ma'am. Ma I was term. isolated. I couldn't. I, I, I had no social life. He was working. He was the one Never. that was going out no, all no. the time and cheating on me. No, okay. come on. no, no. So you stayed at home with the kids? Yes, ma'am. And that's why you said you were a slave. I stayed home. I couldn't go out. I wasn't going out. If I did, I'd have to be home at a certain time. I, I couldn't take his vehicle. That never happened. What time right? did Nothing you have to be like at home? I had to be home by 10. Oh, oh my no. goodness. No, uh, no, wow. no. Nothing like that ever happened. Shoot, I, my, my, my daughters have, a, my granddaughters have a, a longer curfew than that. <laughs> that never happened, Your Honor. It was and nothing 14 like to that. 14 and 15. Never happened. Never. 10 p.m. as an adult? Yes, ma'am. And what time did you have to leave? Before dark? <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yes, I did. And how often did you get to go out? Once a month? Once a year. Once a year? No, Once a no, year. No. Oh, I my couldn't go goodness. out. I could not go out. He was the one already. going out all the time because, oh, he was the provider. No. He was working. No, no, I was no. at home. I was cooking. I was cleaning, taking care of the kids, making sure he had his lunch to go to work, making sure his uniforms were clean. He had sufficient clothes for the week. And what's wrong with I that? A lot of women would it. envy you and they die to be in your position, to be able to stay at home and not have to go to work. And all you have to do is clean and cook and take care of the kids. Now when her husband's like cheating that? on them. Oh. I, so that's the no, part you didn't he like? He was going no, out. No, he no. had his social life. He was going out. Cheating he was on cheating. you. Exactly. Cheating on me, no. going out to bars. I, I couldn't take it, it anymore. I couldn't take it anymore. How do you know Women were cheating? calling the house. The women were they calling? Were calling. They were calling the house. I would answer the phone. It, it winded up being one of oh. his ex. And what would she say when she called? Nothing. I told her she needed to stop calling or else there was going to be something going on. But how do you know that he was cheating and going out and having an affair with her just because she called the house and she was an ex? Sometimes exes call your house because family members give them the phone number. They don't want to give up. They just keep calling anyway. But it doesn't mean that he was responding to the calls. He gave her the number. He no, told I, me, I did he not. told me, Please. I'm talking, no, he no, told no. me he gave her the number. No. Oh. How, how could I give her the number? We lived in Colorado. They were calling They were calling me from Texas. How could I give her the number? Now, you didn't ask me a dumb question like that. How could you give her the number? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Just because uh, she lives in Texas? Come on now. A friend of mine gave, gave her the number, and they called. Okay, and why would your friend do that, knowing that you're a married because man? Because he told him to. He no, said, he, go ahead, give him my number. You know how guys are. Guys are just like that. No, guys that are inconsiderate. Oh, so what, your, your friend was trying to break you and your wife up? No, it was nothing like that. The girl asked about me. We were, we were friends way, for a long time before anything happened between us. 
And she asked about me, and he said, you know what? He's married. He lives in Colorado. You want his number? Okay, yeah, so okay. She, yeah, she called at 2 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, there, there, there was a problem there. but little poor and, judgment on her part. Yes, and I told her, no, and don't call And when she called there. at 2 a.m. in the morning, I know you got set her straight. I, I did. I, I told no, her. You did yes, it. I did. No, you yes, didn't. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. When, yes, Whatever. I did. Yeah, he so, said so her straight when she called at 2 a.m. No. An an talked to her for an hour. No, yeah, I did not. Yeah, he set her straight all right. I mean... But we you were, know, they had a lot to talk about. They hadn't seen each other in years. They had to catch up on old times. <laughs> we At 2 o'clock told... in the morning, well, if my ex was to call me, I'll tell you what, that phone would have been hung up and I'd have been out that bed. You know mm -hmm. what, she was talking to her ex when she was back in Texas. Uh-oh. She went back to Texas. Her, uh, her family was inviting her ex-boyfriends over to her house mm -hmm. so they could see each other again. And so what did she go to Texas for? Um, we, we had a little problem. We had a few problems, so we decided, you know, take a little time apart. So she went back to her family in Texas? Yes, yes, she And she did. hooked up with the ex-boyfriend? Uh, you know, I don't know if she hooked up with him, but he was there. He was calling there. And, you know, that's the first time that I ever went out, and I didn't go out and say, you know, I'm going to hook up with somebody. It happened, though. I was in Colorado by myself it without happened. my family. You just and what happened just when you were in Colorado by yourself without your family? You know, I, I was trying to get my wife to come back to Colorado with me. She did not want to come back. She couldn't even give me a reason. You know what? I, I'm unhappy, nothing. Nothing like that. So what happened? You know, I, I was lonely up there. I went out one time, and, you know, things With the happened. With ex-girlfriend? No, not, not, not the first time. Why do no. you guys always say, yeah. wait a minute, so you went out more than once while yes, your wife I, was gone? I went out three times, three times. And one I, of them was the ex-girlfriend that was yes. way in Texas, and how did she ever yes. get your number? Now, how did she get to Colorado? She, she drove up there. Oh, she could drive, but she yes. couldn't call. She, she drove up there. I was. Uh, and who encouraged that? Now, your friend gave her the phone number, but who told her where you live? No, I, I did. I oh, did it. Oh, so you were interested. No, mm -hmm. I, I, I said I was lonely. My, my wife was gone. My family was gone. I, I had no friends And you there. couldn't go out with your friends that were giving up the number, your male friends, oh, they since were, you had so many? They were, they were back in Texas. I was, I was And you didn't have Colorado. one friend in Colorado? Not, not really. But the I was girl in, was in Texas, too, but she drove to Colorado. You were that She's a lonely, friend. you know, they got lotion, showers, no. okay? Oh, no, no. What'd you say? What did you say? No, lotion, on, you know, showers. Like that. You're that lonely. You, 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 you. She just had oh, to go up to Colorado. Oh, you're suggesting that he could have done something else oh, by himself. No. Oh, I missed that one. Ooh. Okay. Yeah, you, no. didn't, you couldn't use your imagination and figure out something to ease your loneliness oh, no. other no, than your ex. When, when, when she's talking to her ex-boyfriend, her ex-boyfriend's there at the house. I would, call, I would call down there to her house, and, and, and he answers the phone. Oh, so you were getting even? No, I wasn't getting even. Just I, I felt, you know what, I, I'm, I'm lonely up here. She, like I said, she would not give me a reason. And why how she long had she been in Texas? It was five, six months. That is the first time I ever got to talk to anyone. Why were you no. in Texas so long? With your family? Because of his cheating. No, oh, so you no, guys were separated. Was, oh, no, never. Yes, he, I, did, I, did not, I did not cheat on her until whatever. after she was down there. Until after she went to Texas. Yes, after but she went had, to Texas. But you had it in your mind and you were setting it up. No, no, It just no, didn't no. take I, place. I, I never planned any of it. Not, not of it. The divorce court continues. And I said, if you don't want to be here, I don't want you here then. You know what she tells me? She tells me, make sure I get my Tupperware when I leave. <laughs> oh, no. That's all she wanted was a Tupperware. Is your marriage ending because your spouse brags about cheating? Call us at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at www.divorcecourt.com. Divorce Court continues in the case of Joanne Conley, who says her husband James gave her a curfew during their marriage. So how did that woman get all the way from Texas to Colorado oh, all of a sudden? When, when she called and she asked me, she goes, uh, me and a friend are going to take a trip up that way. Do you mind if we stop by there? Said, yeah, sure. Oh, that yes. was the, that's what that 2 a.m. call was about? No, this, this was, this was oh, way later. later than that, way later, So yes. you kept the relationship, the friendship going? Oh, we, we like talked said, every geez, once in a while. What was I, mm. at home? So when did you guys get back together? Obviously, you got back together after that. Well, because we, 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 I figured we could work it out. Okay. Okay, you know, we got and the so children. We love each other. He was showing me that he was willing to listen, not just hear me, but listen to I me. I got you. Listen. So, exactly. So what did you tell him that he had to listen to? I told him there was going to be all Some tomatoes. changes. Yeah. And so what I said, changes? you know what? I'm going to go to work now. You're going to stay home. All the changes. So that, all that's the that's what happened. That's what so happened. So now you got switch roles. Yes, right. You went to yes. work, and you stayed at home with the kids. 
And I suppose when you switch roles, did I it... became somebody. Uh oh, what you I do? I became oh. someone. I had a social life. Oh. I started to go out. I came home one night at seven o'clock no. in the morning. So you started to go out morning. with your friends. Four then nights. I four nights. Hello, four nights. Hello. Four hello. Nights, so seven o'clock in finish. the morning. Four uh -huh. nights. And then he says, "Well, guess what." I don't want you here. No, you can no, leave. No. He kicked me out. And I you did left. not do that. Yeah, no. I left. Okay, now let me hear your version. You okay. came home. Hold on a second. You went out, came home one time at no. 7 in the morning. No, no, one no, night. And I take it that he had done this before on numerous occasions. It's no. When it was his plenty. turn. He's done no. it plenty of times. No, and no, then he no. kicked you out. Okay, now let me hear your version. Okay, this is, what, this is what happened right here. She went out for four straight nights, four nights. The first couple nights weren't too bad. She called me. Hey, I'm here. I'll be there in a little while. The last two nights, she came home at, at around 5.30 one morning. The next day, she, uh, the kids were already off at school before she got home. Wow. I was, sitting, I was standing at the door waiting for her to get there to figure out what was going on. She comes walking up, just smiling away. And, I, and I'm asking her, what's going on? Do you want to talk to me? Let's, let's do something, anything. Tell me what's going on. She would not talk to me. I said, you know what? I said, either you know, you're having an affair out there with somebody or you don't want to be here. And I said, if you don't want to be here, I don't want you here then. You don't have to be here if you don't want to be here. And you know what she tells me? She tells me, make sure I get my Tupperware when I leave. <laughs> oh, no, That's you she did. Was the Tupperware. She no, didn't say nothing did. about the children. She didn't say nothing. All she said was, make sure I get my Tupperware. That's exactly and that's what you said. And that's how the matter right? was exactly. the Tupperware. No, you, exactly. no, no. Yes. Uh -uh. So wait a minute, I have a question. Where had you been till 7 o'clock in the morning? Who knows? She still don't, she still don't tell her. me. What, what, where were you? I was at a friend's. We were playing cards. Then she asked me to dye her hair. I dyed her hair. We laid down, and we were just talking about old things. I was telling her about my problems with him. But you had so three we... kids. You he, couldn't he think, think about that when he was out there cheating so and giving you were out playing. numbers. So in other words, you were getting even. You were trying to let him know what it felt like to be at home all night long with the kids, waiting to hear from you, waiting for you to come home, and you don't show up. So you just deliberately didn't call, right? Yeah. I, yeah, I turned the tables, and he didn't like it one bit. So now you've left, and how long have you guys been separated? Four months now. Four months. And you have the children? I, I have the he children. He has the children. And you're still not working? No, I, I did start working, but it's you more of a, 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 job. a freelance thing where I, I kind of, you know, I, I kind of set my own hours right now. Doing what? Um, I, I work with uh, acrylic plastic, making frames, uh, special items like that. And you can do it from home? No, no, I have, I have to go in. I, I have the children in daycare. Uh -huh. I have the children in daycare. I so, mean, you, so you work around the kids? Yes, yes. I, I, I can't get a job that I had before because I have the children now. And the job you had before required you to be out late yes, at night uh, and travel yeah. and stay away from oh, home? No, because we worked, they had we me. Overnight. I was a slave, Your Honor. We I worked was there. Come on now, Mrs. I was there. Ms. He Conley, could leave whenever not, he wanted. You were not his slave. Yes, How I many was. slaves no. can... can Accept my check when I get home on Friday. Can I don't I know any slaves that get the check. Get my check and go spend it all. With divorce court continues. Trust me, I'm with you. I mean, different reasons. But I'm one of those women that said, I'm not staying at home with three kids. Because that's 24 7. If you would like to have the judge hear your case in divorce court, call us toll free at 1 877 311 2222 or log on to our website at www.divorcecourt.com. Divorce Court continues in the case of Joanne Conley, who says her husband James treated her like his slave. You know, she didn't complain on Fridays when I handed her my check. She had no complaints whatsoever. He never handed me his check. No, don't so, even So, okay, if he didn't hand you the check, did, he, did, you, did you have use of the money? She had complete How use of the money. How were the bills paid? I had to pay the bills because it was, was his too money. Lazy. It was the money that he was earning, though, right? Yes, for the family. Yes. For okay, the so family. So now let's let's not be angry, but we have to tell the truth and give credit where credit is due. He was working, and he yeah, was bringing home right. the money, and you used that money to pay the bills, whether he handed you the check or whether he put the money in the account. Bottom line is, he brought home the bacon, right? And now you're bringing yes, home the bacon. That's right. 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 Oh, it's, it's completely different now, though. Why? You know, when she gets her paycheck, she doesn't come home and say, oh, you know what, let's, let's pay these bills or whatever. I, I don't see the money. When she, when she graduated her academy, she got a $5,000 bonus here. She brings it home. She's counting it. She's having a good time with it. She buys a new car, buys a new car without saying, saying, hey, Michael, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? 
Nothing like that. She just goes out and buys a new car. Two hours. just Because goes we didn't out have any transportation. His vehicle got stolen. So I went out and got a car because we needed it right then and there. And that okay? makes sense. It, you got to It does. It does. Car. But exactly. it don't make no, no sense when he takes no. the car the next day without telling me he's going to no. a friend's house at no, 10 o'clock no. in the morning. Takes my brand new car. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just bought. Takes it to Tucson. On Halloween night, leaving me with the children. Oh, you couldn't take the kids trick or treat. He no. wants to go to a concert no, with she, his friends. Now, what time did he to come Tucson. home? Oh, three o'clock in the morning the next day. Uh oh. No, she, she's failing, failing so that to was tell the month you this before you guys separated. That was Halloween, that was, and you separated right, in November. Right. No, she, she's failing to tell you that originally it was supposed to be me and her going to that concert, and, what and happened? she backed out at the last minute. And she wanted to stay there with her yes. friends? No, no, why, she why, stayed why? home with the because kids. She stayed I, home I, with the kids. I was thinking about the kids. There was nobody there to babysit the kids. And it was Halloween. No. Right. And you were going to take them trick-or-treating. Right. So now that you're working and he's at home with the children, he says, I want child support. I know you're not arguing against that. No, I'm paying his rent right now. I don't have an argument with that. Okay. I'm paying his How rent right now. How much is the rent? His rent? Doesn't he have the children? Yes. So aren't yes. you taking care of them too? Yes. All right. So how much is the rent? Five seventy nine. So you've been pay you've paid that for the last month? For the last three, four months. No, okay. the, the last two months. The last two months she's paid it, and uh, the, this month she's supposed to pay it for me the one last time. That wasn't something that we had agreed on until I got a job and I got settled again. I can understand, cause trust me, I was you. I mean, different reasons, but I'm one of those women that said I'm not staying at home with three kids. Because that's 24-7. And I knew that I didn't want to be there 24-7, changing diapers, cooking, washing, ironing, cleaning, and all of that all day long. And the only people to talk to was little ones. So your conversation was rather limited. And um, so I chose the workforce and to be a career woman. But when you make those kinds of decisions, you still have to think about it and do it in the best interest of everybody concerned. You can't do that out of anger. The divorce court continues. I told him, I said, look, this is how I feel. I'm falling out of love. I, I can't stand you anymore. Don't touch me. Don't mm. be in the same room with me. Woo. It, two years, we did not sleep in the same bed. Divorce court continues in the case of James Conley, who wants his wife, Joanne, to pay child support. It's unfortunate that you all couldn't work it out, you know, and still work together. And because the issue was not the fact that you weren't earning money and that you were staying at home. The issue was the fact that he was staying away from home and you were not working together and you were feeling that he didn't love you, didn't want you, and you were feeling neglected because you had the full burden of the household. That's what you should have worked on because that issue never changed. You just switched reels. I've tried, Your Honor. I understand. I sat that's him what down, I'm saying. I talked to him. I told him. I said, "Look, this is how I feel. I'm falling out of love. I, I can't stand you anymore. Don't touch me. Don't mm. be in the same room with me." Woo! It, two years, we did not sleep in the same bed. That's how bad it's got. And you all didn't seek any professional help. I, I, I've asked her for years. For I mean, years. during those two years. No. Oh, no. no. I, I once well, again, I I've asked her. Late. I've asked her for years, Your Honor, years. All right, let's get to this issue of child support. Is the three-year-old in daycare? Yes, she is. All three of them are in daycare. The, and how much is daycare? I pay $7 a week for all three children there. Because of your income? Yes, because but of the income. But once you get back to work, that's going to change. Well, the, um, the, it's, the price is going to go up, yes. Right, but, um, because you yes. will no longer be eligible yes. for the state-funded program yes. in all likelihood. Okay. Yes. But let's deal also, with what you're I'm doing now. I'm providing health care for all of them. And, and that's good. And him. He's still on there. And you have to keep him on there until the divorce is final. Right. And I tell you then, when the divorce is final, you will, not, you will no longer be eligible for health care yes. on her policy, but you can do what's called a conversion and still keep the policy if you pay the premium. That's, okay. the, that's the catch. They allow you to do that. It's called a, under COBRA. But I'm going to order, Mrs. Uh, Conley, that you pay the daycare expense. I'm also going to order that you pay... $600 per month, which is basically what you're doing now in terms of the rent, $600 per month in child support. 
and you can give the money directly to him and it's to be used for the benefit of you and the children, yes. which means paying the rent, buying food, clothing, shelter. But child support is $600 per month plus daycare, which is now $7 a week. And I'm going to order that you maintain the children on your health insurance policy. All right? That's the order of the court. Court's adjourned. All rise. Parties may leave the courtroom. I'm happy to see that you've worked that out with custody. Well, well, that was a pretty good one there. And, and what did he say? I'm the one that's home with them all the time now. Well, she, I she do agreed the homework. with that. I do the homework, I cook, mm -hmm. I clean, I go to the school, I take them to school. I yep. am it, now the, the nurturing, nurturing parent. parent. And so therefore he has right. custody of the children. Now, I am also happy that she was rational enough to recognize right. that the children are okay with their father. My wife's upset with me because she found out I'm married to another woman. I kicked him out of my house because I was not going to tolerate him constantly lying to me. This man lied to me and told me that he had no kids and he had no wife. It wasn't your business. What, what you, you say? None of her business. business. What I do in the past is my oh, business. Mr. Knowles, you sound like a fool. How in the world are you going to say you love my kids and, don't take and you don't home. love your own? I agree. And I am not the one. So then what happened? Right after this child, the next year, up uh, pop another child. Oh my goodness! Whoo! Every year there's a new surprise. Every year there's another child. What? I feared my father more than I feared him. Girl, I know what you're talking I about. Know, I know. Come on, y'all. Come, come on, on, come, come on, on, come on. Lord have mercy. Don't do me like this. Got to. Got to. Jenny, got to. Now, Deborah Knowles says her marriage to Jasper was a lie and she wants him to give her back the money she spent on their wedding in today's session of Divorce Court. All rise. Court is now in session. Judge Maybelline Eve from presiding. You may be seated. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. This is the matter of Deborah Knowles versus Jasper Knowles. Yes. And I'm advised that you've been married for four and a half years and you want him to pay you $4,000 reimbursement for the wedding. What? I ain't paying no $4,000. You shot, oh, now let me just give you a little warning here, no, no. honey. No, 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 You don't tell me what you ain't gonna do. You got that? I ain't gonna pay no $4,000. You gonna say it again, huh? I don't have $4,000 to pay Oh, her. now that sounds a little better. Now, let me just start with Ms. Knowles and see why she thinks you should pay the $4,000 before you start talking about whether you're not going to pay it, okay? We got that? We got that. All right. Ms. Knowles, tell me about it. Well, Your Honor, I'm asking you to reimburse me my $4,000. No, I'm not going to give you a dime. Oh, well, I'm asking for $4,000. No, no, she asked me to reimburse her. I said, <laughs> I am not going to give her a dime. I ain't either. <laughs> I ain't not either. I'm asking for $4,000 that I spent on a wedding that me and Mr. Nose got married, and I just recently found out my husband is married to another woman. That's her How wedding. How did you find that out? That's through, her wedding. Through you papers, her, hold on. Through papers that came through the mail, um, his wife asked him for a divorce and child another support. Another wife? Yes. And, and I thought kids. that I was divorced, and though, Your Honor. Kids, your I thought honor. I was so, divorced. So hold on. You got to... No. You, you gotta Piece of paper through the mail. Yes, ma'am. Another woman was suing for a divorce and child support yes, for two kids. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And you did not have a clue? No, ma'am. Huh. This was three months ago? Yes, ma'am. And you've been married about four and a half years at this point, yes, right? Yes, ma'am. But ever since me and this man has been married, this Honor, man has lied on. to me over and over since. So how did that make you feel when you got a piece of paper saying, this is, uh, I'm married and I'm asking for a divorce and two kids? What did you feel like? Judge, I was crushed. I mean, my whole world was destroyed at that time because I married this man because I didn't want to live in sin. I go to church. I wanted the church going man. You know what I'm saying? That we could go to church together and everything. Yeah. I didn't want nobody that was in the bars, you know. And, and that's the way he represented himself? Yes, ma'am. Yes, he did. When we first got together, he was going to church and everything, you know. And after the first year of our marriage, 
up Papa Child. Before I made this man, I asked now. this man, what, did he have any kids or have he ever had been married? And I this is my no. first marriage, Your Honor. You know, and, what and this tell you? man lied to me and told me that he had no kids and he had no wife. Okay. What's your business? And then the first year, to, what, what you, you say? mean? That ain't my business. business. What yes, I do in the past is my me. business. No, no, no you yes, married me. That's my oh, business. Mr. No, no you, you sound it. like a fool. Talking Thank about it was none of her business. Thank you. It wasn't her business. She you getting ready to marry somebody and they're not supposed Man. to know anything about your past? No. Nope. Come on now, you sound I ain't like an idiot. about hers. But I told you what about it. I ain't asked you for it. You didn't have to ask. But you Because I never lied to you about nothing. Come on, Mr. No. Nothing in this So he told you you didn't even have any kids. Yes, he told me he had no kids, all right, Your Honor. I have two kids, all right. Did he know about yours? Yes, he knew about mine. Were they you living know? with you? Yes, my kids are living with me. I don't have small kids. I have, you know, my kids are grown, 18 and 20. Uh -huh. You know, but when he came in my life, you know what I'm saying, they was teenagers, right. you know. And we had went through a lot, and I took him through a lot before I brought this man into my house. So how did you find out about a child? Well, after the first year of my marriage... Up popped the child because he had to pay child support. Whoops, he so went from four hundred dollars to five hundred dollars a week to forty nine dollars, sixty nine dollars, sixty five, seventy five dollars. And I'm huh? saying, Wait a what minute, is happening with your money? Why is your check is being oh, so okay. short? So his check started to go right, down. Right. Okay. Right. And from five hundred dollars like, a week to forty nine. Right. 50. And sixty five dollars. What can I pay with that? Nothing. And so what was he saying when you asked him about that? Kept lying. I don't wow. know. They cut my hours down. They cut my hours down. I ain't making that many hours. They cut my hours down. So then, then what'd you find out so after that? I found out he had to go to court. So I took off work and went to court with him, okay? He had to pay child support for this child, all right? It hurted me. It devastated me that he lied to me from the get about having any kids, for right. one. You know what I'm saying? But so, since he was taking care of yours. Right. I said, all right, the thing for me to do as a wife is to accept your kids. Right. All right. So I accepted that child. I brought him in my home. I let him start spending weekends with me. He was totally against that. Why he is he bothered. over here? Why are you doing all of this? I mean, this he is your be child. with your own child? No. Yep. No, he didn't, Your Honor. Oh, you he are got really a selfish man. How? He's sickening. He is sickening. He got upset with me because I wanted to be shut up. Because shut I up. wanted to be a part you of that child's up. life. Because how in the world are you gonna say you love my kids and don't take and care you of your don't own. love your own? I agree. Okay, something wrong with that picture. Something's here. real wrong with and that I picture. I am not the one. I told him. Okay, I quite agree. You know what I'm saying? And he's all they want is the money. Why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? This is your child. You are really. I so mean, just because the man paid, just because the man paid child support, a child be more than child support. Well, would you preach that lesson for me again? I've been trying to say it to, over and over and over. I'm glad somebody else agrees. I mean, money is is all right because the parent needs money. Help me out with but that. But that child need nourishment. Yeah. Any love, any guidance, any you understanding. Hey, he don't want to do that. He don't want to do none of that, Your Honor. Well, I certainly applaud you for doing it. So then you kept, you continued, continued in the marriage despite the fact that he had a child that he didn't tell you about. Right. Didn't let that come between your relationship. Didn't walk out of the marriage, even right. though he was a liar, a That's big liar. Right. How right. was that child? That child was, what, 14 at the time? He wouldn't know. He could he'd kill it. <laughs> I know. When divorce court continues. So then what happened? Right after this child, the next year, up pop another child. Oh my goodness. Cool. Every year there's a new Every surprise. Every year there's another child. Is your marriage ending because your spouse was a shopaholic? Call us at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at www.divorcecourt.com. Divorce court continues in the case of Deborah Knowles, who says she is divorcing Jasper after four years of marriage because he's still married to another woman. So then what happened? You know, and um, like I said, I took the child, you know, tried to be right, I got that a stepmother part. and all that. All right, right after this child, I accept this child. The next year, this is the second year of our marriage, up pop another child. Oh, my goodness. Whew, every year there's a new every surprise. Every year there's another child. So and how another mother. How was this child? This child was, I think, 17, 18. What do you have to say about that one? He said that uh, he paid his child support, and I didn't need to know. 
So you took that child in too? No, I didn't take him in. Cause he didn't want that one. He lived out of town. Okay. He lived out of town. And then th the fourth year of your marriage, that's when you find out he's married. He's married with two kids. But I and that's why he has two kids. Four kids, Your Honor, that I didn't know about. Your Honor, I filled out some papers for, supposed to be about his divorce. I messed with, and it, it messed around and it being some child support. Well, I'm thinking I'm divorced, so I married Debbie. Look, now. Did you tell Debbie you had another wife? No. No. Did you tell her you I had. Figured that I, I, I did was you tell divorced. her you had other children? No. Did you, you, so you why you don't want your wife to know anything about your life? To another lady. Well, how I'm, you gonna forget about a marriage, Your Honor? Well, did you get a piece of. Hold on a second. Did you ever get a piece of paper in the mail that says this is a final judgment of divorce? No. So then you knew it wasn't final. Hello. But we was in court, and the judge said, case dismissed. So I figured. So we he didn't say, you don't dismiss it. Dismiss means that he didn't grant the divorce. Thank you. And you like don't have I, to figure you get a piece of paper when you're divorced, and it says it very clearly, final judgment of divorce, a dissolution, or whatever words they use in your state. You don't have to guess. It's not a guessing game. It's a knowing game. Well, what the person was or wasn't in the past gives you a, an idea of what's happening today. You know? True. Well, you can't just leave the past behind. It follows you to some extent. It caught up with you. Yes, it did. Did you think she would never know? I thought she would never know. Why? why? Because I didn't talk about it. And if you, the papers went to the house, your honor, she never would have knew. Your honor, he was having the papers go to his job. Well, that's what child support papers usually go. No. You mean his mail? His meal was So how did you to, get it then? Honey, it just by happen, it came to my house. Just by happen, it came through the mail. So but somebody had at the, the job, job decided to send it to the it. house. Right. Probably was somebody that decided you should know. That wasn't nothing but the Lord, because I was praying on it. <laughs> well, honey, because I told... Yeah, girl, I'm you weren't praying. I was praying. I kept wondering why it was so much torment in her. Because when we first got married... all you do is nag, nag, and nag. All you do is... All you do is lie, lie, lie. I mean, at least you I'm not You don't even give liar. people a chance to even talk. Well, now, I'm going to give you a chance to talk, Mr. Nose, because I want to know something about why you felt it necessary to tell this big lie in order to keep it a secret and not reveal that you were married, that you had children. I mean, all of that was your past, and those were children that you had before you decided to marry your wife. Why did you think it necessary to keep it a secret? I thought that I was going to lose her again. What do you mean again? You had lost her before? Yes, ma'am. Under what circumstances? Tell me about it. A young age. Well, tell me about it. What happened? Well, I met her at 16 years old, and I was about 21, 22. Mm -hmm. And her parents were strict. So we couldn't, you know, keep on dating. All right. So we left our own separate ways. We met up, and 15 years later, we met up. So I ain't want to lose her again, so I married her. So 15 years later, you were still in love with this woman? Yes. Even though you had married somebody else in between? Yes. And you were afraid that if you would have told her about what had been going on in your life the last 15 years, that she wouldn't she marry would, you? She wouldn't have married me. Oh, Mrs. No, Nose, hold on, like let me lie. ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. You knew him in your child, he said yes, when you were teenagers, right? Yes, ma'am. In the same town? Same town. Did you ever leave that town? No, ma'am. And you stayed in that town? Yes. Now, you didn't hear any gossip, any scuttlebutt, any rumors, nothing about this man and his children? No, Your Honor, because... How big is this town? It's a big town, but I live on one side of the town. He lived in a whole different subdivision. I bet you that town not as big as Los Angeles County. And I can tell but you your, before your Honor, I leave here today, somebody's going to know what went on here. <laughs> probably will, Your Honor, but I'm saying I've never seen him no more. But didn't I didn't cause him... you some concern that he had been gone for 15 years out of your life. Right. And you needed to know what had happened and in his life I was the last 15 question. years. That's why I was asked to question. You didn't know his why parents? His parents is dead. Oh, and he didn't have any siblings? He don't have no sisters and brothers. Nobody that I can go to and What about the anything. high school classmates? All of them were dead? I don't know anything about his high school classmates. Oh, you didn't go to the same high school? No. Oh. Like I said, I'm way You met in high school, side. but you were on opposite sides of town. Right. And see, my parents is very strict. I used to sneak to go try to see him. I feared my, my father more than I feared him. Girl, I know what you're talking Honey, about. So I'm I him. <laughs> So I let him go. You know I'm what I'm right saying? I'm right with you on that one. The divorce court continues. Your divorce still isn't final? No. Oh, my goodness. This marriage is void. You're not really married. You're a bigamist. If you would like to have the judge hear your case in divorce court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222. 
or log on to our website at www.divorcecourt.com. Divorce Court continues in the case of Deborah Knowles, who says that after four years of marriage, she discovered that Jasper is still married to another woman. Now, Mr. Knowles, this was a nice woman, and you knew that, right? And you didn't want to lose her, but how did you think you were going to keep this lie forever? I don't know, Your Honor. I just did it. I just did it. And you really thought that you'd be able to keep it going? Yes. You didn't think if you were honest with her about what had happened in the last 15 years of your life? I mean, everybody knows that 15 years passes. You were in high school. You became an adult. Any number of things could have transpired in those last 15 years. You didn't think that she would accept you for who you were today? If you I'm had told her that. the truth? I didn't think about that. Oh, that's sad. He was sad. too busy lying. No, he said he loved you so much he didn't want you to leave Love me. don't hurt, Your Honor. Love, love doesn't is, hurt. Who told love you that? Love is not Thank deceiving. You. Who told you that? Love is not deceiving. Well, love hurts. I mean, it hurts when you find out somebody deliberately <laughs> and it hurts when you went out love. to hurt you and it with their lies and their deceit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -mm. You shouldn't deceive, though. No, I shouldn't have. He knew what he was doing. He knew what he so was now doing. What? But, was, but other than that, was he a good man to you? We, we had our little arguments, just like any other marriage, mm -hmm. you know. But until this happened... I was real good to him. You, yeah, right. Yeah. Um, what you say? What have, what, what have you done for her? You say he's been so good to her. I help her pay them bills. And take care of those children, huh? Until yeah. they're now adults. Mm -hmm. But you didn't take care of your own, didn't that something? I'm taking care of my own, too. I'm paying child support. All yeah, right. But what about that love and nurturing and support that she talked about that they need? The parents don't want me to see them, so here's my child support. I'm not oh. going to... So right. you lost the relationship with the mothers? Yes. Oh. But now the children are adults, so you can see them, because they can make a decision of their own. And the mother say, don't come to my but house. But they're now adults. All my kids are not adults. Oh. I see. Mm -hmm. So you're such a nice man. Why they don't want you to see the kids? They just Does crazy. Because liar. Oh. You so your divorce final from that other lady yet? No. Nope. He's still married. Oh, it's still not final? Next month, it'll be 15 years, March the 1st. Your 15 divorce still years. Your isn't final? Yeah. No. Oh, my goodness. This marriage is void. You're not really married. You're a bigamist. That's what you are? Is that a shock? Yes, yeah, a You're shock. You're a bigamist. No He's bigamist. a When you marry another person with knowledge that your marriage is but not I ain't been with that woman your honor, all you over had 11 to do, years. All you, had to do was go, all you had to do was go to that courthouse and find out for sure if your marriage was, was your divorce was final. That's all you had to do. Since you were the only one who knew you were married, she couldn't have checked it out. Now, I give lectures about when you marry somebody and you know they've been married, I and no just because they tell you you're divorced, you should check it out for yourself. But I if you no told her that, she couldn't check it out. But that's all you had to do. So you're a bigamist. You've lived a lie. Your marriage is void. She had a big wedding, spent a lot of money. I ain't tell her to spend that money. You didn't tell her not to either, did you? Yep. No. You participated. Wasn't mine. What'd you say? Wasn't mine. Was it your wedding? Or did she marry somebody else? It was, was my, that you standing it was, there? It, that it, it was me standing there. Or was that your but ghost? I didn't ask her to spend no four thousand so dollars on no wedding. So whether you ask her or not, she did it for a wedding, and you were part of that wedding, and you were the only one who knew about all these sack of lies. Mm -hmm. Now you don't think you owe her anything for that? Sorry. Oh. oh. <laughs> That's what you think you owe. Oh, have mercy, Jesus. The divorce court continues. Come on, y'all. Come, 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 come on, come on, come on. Lord have mercy. Don't do me like this. Got to. Got to. Jenny, got to. Divorce court continues in the case of Deborah versus Jasper Knowles. Deborah says she wants Jasper to give her back the money she spent on their wedding because he is still married to another woman. You owe her more than that. Usually when people get married and they decide to pay for a wedding, my argument is and my law and ruling is that that's the choice you made, you pay for the wedding. But this became a contractual thing now because you weren't divorced from your first wife. So you entered into a contract, an agreement to marry. She relied upon that contract and unjustifiably relied because you were committing a fraud, mm -hmm. because you were not divorced. That's right. So she, her reliance on, on the contract was unjustifiable. 
and it was based upon a fraud. So since the contractual agreement was based upon a fraud, the contract is void. Since the contract is void, she doesn't have to pay the money. You got to pay it. Who? You committed the fraud. I don't have no money. Well, you better find some. Cause you gotta reimburse her the four thousand dollars. Yeah, come on, y'all. Come, 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 come on, come on, come on. Lord have mercy, don't do me like this. Got to, got to, <laughs> get him, got to, get him. That's the only you fair should, thing. You a liar. Hush, Debbie. Come on you now, Mr. Pay. Mr. Knows. You should pay. All you had to do. For your lies. Oh, I'm gonna get four thousand dollars from. I barely make two hundred. Hold on, you hush up for a minute. Let me uh -huh. talk. That is not you a liar. where you get it from. Is not my concern, nor is it my problem. I don't deal with the where's and the why's and the how's. I only deal with what is. And what is is my order. Pay her $4,000. That's the order of course. All rise. <laughs> Parties may leave the courtroom. That's a shame. I mean, of course, his, 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 his concern was noble. His intentions were noble. He didn't want to yeah. lose her again. His problem was, he, just he, said that, he said that first lie, and then he had to keep doing it. Yeah. And keep doing it and live the lie, and eventually it catches up. That's the problem with lying. That's you right. got to keep lying. <laughs> I want my wife to be fat. Because we was happy when she was heavy. Now that she's losing weight, everything just fell apart. When I lost weight, Freddie's attitude towards me really changed. As long as I'm fat, he can control me. And nobody's going to control me. I used to weigh 300 pounds. Oh, Mr. Denson told me, as long as you're 300 pounds and over, well, nobody wants you because you don't always be ugly. I ain't gonna worry about it going out and running the streets and, and cheating and all oh. of that. <laughs> oh, and then he told our daughter we were gonna take our daughter to the zoo. He was like, there's no reason to go to the zoo. We had mommy right here. He was right there, go to the elephant and the hippo. Oh, that's cruel. I came home from work one day. I go upstairs, he's butt naked with a 300 pound woman. They get busy in our bed. He was talking. Now, you know what? <laughs> Elisa Denson says her husband Fred was upset when she lost 100 pounds because he wanted her fat. Now she wants him to pay her child support in today's session of Divorce Court. All rise. Court is now in session. Judge Maybelline Ephraim presiding. You may be seated. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. This is the matter of Alyssa Denson versus Fred Denson. I understand after almost 11 years of marriage and you have one child together, you're going to end this marriage. And Mrs. Denson, you say, it's because your husband wants to keep you fat. You're going for a divorce. Yes. What's going on, Ms. Denson? Mr. Denson over here, I used to weigh 300 pounds. Oh. Mr. Denson doesn't want me to lose the weight. Why not? Mr. Denson so has told me. As long as you're 300 pounds and over, well, nobody wants you because you're going to always be ugly. Oh, He's also that is told a me, lie. that is not a lie. He has you also lie. told me that, oh, yeah, big women look good, especially when you're three and four, 500 pounds. That's not looking good to me, and it didn't feel good to me. So I started losing the weight about a year ago. Mm -hmm. Mr. Denson makes me eight pancakes, a half a dozen of eggs, a box of bacon. <laughs> Ooh. Ritz. Cholesterol, cholesterol. <laughs> a Ritz. box of bacon, a whole box? A whole box of bacon with grits, with biscuits, with bagels, and bring it up at 4 o'clock in the morning. Oh, no. But you eat, you eat. Heart you attack eat. time. He, I mean, he she wants me to be She don't send it back the, down. Yes, I do. She don't send it back down. Why you do that, Mr. Dixon? Because as long as she big, we happy, man. We are you. We. Wait a minute, now she just said that she was no longer happy with her size. So why do you think that as long as you're big, we are happy? What, what makes yeah, you so why happy when she's big? Hey, just, I ain't got to worry about her going out, running the streets, and, and cheating and all oh. of that. Oh! <laughs> and so you everything. think it's her size that made the difference? Yeah, when, when she was heavier, yeah, we was happy. Because she didn't go out <laughs> and look for other men? No, it, that too. 
I was not happy being 300 pounds. What makes him think you were happy? Oh, and then he told our daughter, we were going to take our daughter to the zoo. She always wanted to go to the zoo. He was like, there's no reason to go to the zoo. We had mommy right here. Oh, well, oh that's cool. So like, much. they go to Elephant she, and the Hippo and whatever else, a, whatever other elephant big Elephant and Hippo? What other big animal is there? You wife all of that in the presence of your no, daughter? No, no, she lied. What makes the difference? You said we were happy when she was big. Now we're not happy. Obviously, something has changed. Tell yeah, me that. Yeah, she started losing weight, so, you uh -huh. know. She and just out in the streets and, 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 and getting her fingernails done and hair done. She can, oh, I mean, I don't mind her doing I don't mind her doing that. I don't, I don't mind her doing that. But I gotta hear this, Mr. Dent. She when she was big, she used to do she used to do a whole lot for me. What'd she do for you when she was she big? She used to cook. Oh, and now she doesn't cook for you. She don't cook for me no more. You cook for her. I cook for yep. And when she All was big, time. she didn't get her nails done. She didn't go no. to the hairdresser. No. She didn't go out of the house much, is that it? All she do is think of herself now. And before, Just all she did was thought of? Both of us. Oh. I'm doing everything. I'm around the house like Mr. Belvedere. You know what I'm saying? Every oh. time she opened her mouth, it's go ask your daddy, can he do this? Go ask your daddy, can he do that? So now you're feeling like the butler instead of the husband. Yeah. Now, if I, now if I send a message to her, ask your mother, can she do this? It's tell him to, uh, I'll see. So you all talk through the children? Basically, now we do. Before so, we did. So you've lost some weight and you've changed your ways and you getting around with other men? Is that what he's telling me? I'm not cheating on him. He don't want cheating oh on me. God. I came home from work one day. <laughs> I came home from work one day because I was sick. I go upstairs. He's butt naked with a 300 pound woman. <laughs> they getting busy in our bed. I went downstairs and got a hammer and tried to crack Ooh. both of them. We just, they ran around the house butt naked. This, <laughs> they running down the street naked? They were running down the street butt naked. That's not funny. In daylight. I, I can't believe she, she's sitting here you saying that. You had another woman in no. your bed? No. Is she right? Is she lying or what? Yeah, she lying. That didn't happen. I, didn't I mean. No, no, no. Hold on. I'm I not mean. saying I wasn't in the house with the woman, but I wasn't doing nothing with her. I mean. The woman was in your house? Yeah. In your bedroom? I mean, we were sitting in the bedroom, yeah. Why? We was talking. Now, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> and she was supposed to be my oh, best friend. Oh, my goodness. You I mean, know what? I mean, she was over there. I you mean, she came so... over there and you wasn't home, so. Miss Dixon, was... that is so lame. She was in my bedroom. <laughs> we was talking. I mean, it could have been a little get back. I mean, this. It, what was, do you mean get back? Once to, I mean, I came home to get tools before, and she was in the basement cheating on my blanket. In and the I basement cheating. On, on my blanket. Okay, so that now I sleep is under. cheating synonymous with having sex too? But this was before what the little thing that happened with me. No, it wasn't. So yes, you it so was. so yours no, was get wasn't. back. Hold yeah. on a second. See what I'm saying? Yours was get back. Payback. Yeah, but So in order not, to pay back then you're admitting now that you were doing something. I didn't say I, I was I, doing I, something. I, I just oh, said, you know my goodness. if she would see me if she would see me with another woman, you know. In the basement stop. on his blanket? No, Your Honor, this was Having after... sex with another man? This was before. No, this was after work. After what? Because I wasn't cheating this on you. This may have been I wasn't the, the one having women call me at 2, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. After... I need my car fixed. I'm at a mechanic. At 4 o'clock in the morning. I'm a mechanic. I need a transmission. At 4 o'clock in the morning. I'm a mechanic. At 2 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> my spark plugs went dead. Can I speak to Freddy? I'm a mechanic, man. So you were a mechanic, but you wasn't a mechanic in the bedroom. Well, see, Miss Denson, he didn't tell you what kind of tune-up and what kind of plug and he was sparking. <laughs> <laughs> it's all kind of sparks you plug and all kind of tune-ups you get. The divorce court continues. I saw the hickeys and stuff on your neck and you, I, you told me what you was I doing. I don't do hickeys. You just have sex. <laughs> no! Is your marriage ending because your husband thinks he's God's gift to women? Call us at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at www.divorcecourt.com. Divorce Court continues in the case of Elisa Denson, who says her husband Fred wanted her fat because he didn't want other men to talk to her. She knew before we got married that I was a mechanic. I had a pager. But 2 a.m. in the morning, nobody in my car, you do no spark plugs. I mean, people need their car. I'm, oh, hey, come on, Mr. B Denson. I work 24-7 around the You're clock. right, and you call, how much you pay for <laughs> 2 a.m. calls, triple time? 
I don't know about no 2 a.m. calls. See? Okay, then. So don't play that mechanic stuff on me. I ain't never got no calls in no 2 a.m. Come on, I have children your age, had. and you trying to run a little weak game <laughs> like that on me. Please. So you in the basement having sex with another man, and you're married? Now, what's that all about? Because I call myself getting back at him for oh, coming home I heard this and catching him in the bed with that woman, the one he wasn't doing nothing with. So now, okay, so now you caught him in the bed with another woman and he was having sex. So you're going to take your body, have sex, and have a baby. Now, what's the baby about? Is that payback too? No, the baby, I'm not going to say my baby was an accident, but it wasn't supposed to happen. No, you sure not going to say it was an accident because you knew good and well what you were doing. And you know what happens when you have sex. You have six children, which means you have four before that one. Right? right. And when he married me, he knew I had four he children. He didn't say anything yeah. about it. I know, because he but don't I'm ever acknowledge But I'm talking about you kids. telling me that that child was, oh, that's just ridiculous. I got to pay back by destroying my own, by messing with my own body and putting me in the position of having another child, another 18 years minimum, I have to deal with this child. That's my payback. You punishing yourself. Not to mention the child. Not to mention before that in the you elevator with You don't take chances of having children with, you know, to get even with a man. You, you don't right. bring children into the world for that reason. Well, I mean, I should have thought about it before somebody begged and pleaded for a baby that they what always about, wait wanted. Wait a minute, now the elevator? What'd you say about an elevator? Oh, he begged and pleaded. No, 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 oh. wait. What did you say about an elevator? <laughs> this was before the basement thing. Another what elevator? During the I came... Marriage? I came to Cleveland because she told me a lie and said that my daughter was sick. And she know anytime she say anything about my daughter being sick or hurt anything, I'm gonna come to Cleveland. So you all were separated? Yeah, we were separated. And what happened when you got there? there? When I got there, I went to her grandmother's place. I asked for it, they said, she's not here, she's upstairs. I go to get on the elevator, she getting off the elevator with this guy, I don't forget his name, but anyway. <laughs> and and she, she told getting me, off the elevator? I didn't catch him. She told me. Oh, my goodness. She told me. <laughs> I told you what? What you, did I tell you? Told, you? I saw the hickeys and stuff on your neck, and you, I, you told me what you was I doing. I don't do hickeys. Okay. Okay. You just have sex. <laughs> <laughs> no! I don't even know what he's talking about cheating, and don't even get He said the, the man on the elevator. Stuff. I don't know no man on the elevator, and don't stand and here trying to play. And that's probably what's bad about it. You didn't know him. You just no, had sex with him. I don't know nothing him. about no man on the that elevator. That part may be true. You I didn't know, know him. I don't know nothing about no man on the elevator. Honestly, y'all, I don't. But when he talking you know, about when, when our daughter gets sick, <laughs> this... I come a running. What about the time on her fifth birthday? You said, oh, yeah, daddy will be there. I'm going to be there in about there. an hour. You never showed up. I couldn't get there that day. Until a week later, after you spent that money on that white girl you was with. How you know who he spent the money on? Because he brought the woman over my house, Your Honor, at 12 o'clock at night to wake up our four-year-old daughter to tell her, this is going to be your new stepmom. No. Oh, you didn't do anything she stupid like even, that, did you? My other she children never even are witnesses. Saw this woman. Mr. Denson, did you do that? She never even saw this I woman. Saw did you go her, over there at four like in the morning with another woman? I asked the woman because I was driving her car. Yeah. I said, I need to see my daughter. At I 4 a.m.? It wasn't 4 a.m. Okay, maybe 2 a.m. It was like 11 o'clock. And what the devil are you smirking about? You think all this what, is funny? I mean, I mean, one time I came late. Wow. No, you didn't. But you have been smirking throughout this whole statement. Because she, why you been she lied it? so much. She lied so much. She lied so much. Okay. What, what has about? she lied about? Everything. Okay, tell me the part she lied about. Because we've already concluded, and you, 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 you uh, confirmed what she said about the other woman yourself. You I kept mean, talking yeah, and confirmed started. it yourself. I brought the woman to the house, but I, it ain't like I brought the woman in and told her all that. I'm a, this gonna be your new stepmom and all that. When the divorce court continues. He was laying on me and he was like, mommy, you know, I love you, but I love you more while you fat and squishy. And that really hurt. And I knew he couldn't have gotten it from nowhere but him. like to have the judge hear your case in divorce court, call us toll free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at www.divorcecourt.com. Divorce Court continues in the case of Elisa Denson, who says her husband Fred cooked her fattening foods because he didn't want her to lose weight. 
So let me ask you something, Mr. Denson. You're telling me that the problem in your marriage began when your wife began to lose weight because then her attitude changed yeah. and she was no longer concerned about you. She concerned got selfish about... and she was only spending time with herself, about doing her hair and taking care of herself. Yeah, she Is just, that what you're telling me? Just, just disowned me. So in other words, then, you felt safer. The cheating and all that wasn't happening then. Right. So that's what I'm saying. You felt safe when your wife was big. Yeah. That she wouldn't go out and get another man. Because you didn't, didn't think have that no she reason. could. She didn't have no reason. I don't know why she, so once what, she, you, once she you, lost weight. You gave weight, the impression it, that you didn't like yourself when you were larger? I didn't like myself. I wasn't happy. Especially after he sat up there. So is that why you had all those babies? No. You trying to get happy? No. No. So no. how'd you end up with four children before had, you met him? I was in a relationship beforehand, and I had four children by one person. So then when you finally took control of your life and said, you know what? I don't like this. I don't like me this way. Right, but actually it was my baby boy. Your son? My th he was three at the time. He woke you up? No, he was, he's the one that made me open my eyes about That's my way. That's what I'm way. saying. What did he say? He was laying on me, and he was like, Mommy, you know, I love you, but I love you more while you fat and squishy. And that, that really hurt, because I knew I was big. But when he said that and he was just laying there, that really, really I love you me. while you're fat and squishy. Yeah. And I knew he couldn't have got it from nowhere but him. He said it. He said it. But he probably talked about how much he loved you and he loved you because as, as a big woman. Obviously, he liked a big woman. He married a big woman. Right. But now so he, he likes fat women. Now he can't deal with the woman that he had. Because you're different than what he was when he married you. Change. You just... I'm no different than what I was. Yes, I mean, when I started losing the weight and... Yes, you are. We went... By your own admission, you said beforehand, what'd you do? When you were overweight, 300 pounds, what was your typical day? My typical day was eating, mm -hmm. watching stay TV, in stay in the house. Waiting for me to come home. Cooking for him. Cooking for him mm -hmm. and the kids, more so the kids than him. And eating while, while you were cooking. Right. And after you finished cooking, too. That, <laughs> true. Every time I cook, I eat, I eat and cook, and it was just getting ridiculous. But it then when you lost the weight, what happened? When I lost the weight, then all of a sudden his whole attitude changed. No, what, what happened with your attitude my about attitude, yourself? Oh, I got happy. You felt better about yourself? I felt a whole lot better about myself. You felt and that you looked good then? And I other people good. started saying the same thing to you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you got comments and you were getting flattered. Yes, and, and it so felt good. you thought then, now I got to get out of my relationship because now I look good. No, I want out of my relationship because my husband is lazy, irresponsible. Goodness. He's the biggest liar on How earth. How is he lazy and irresponsible when he was the one working and you were sitting there on me? I'm, but wait, I was working before we got married. I was working two jobs before we okay, got married. Okay, but once you got married, you say he's lazy See, and irresponsible. He didn't work? She didn't have to work no more, because I was doing everything. Okay. Oh, he was doing But she wouldn't, look, I would even offer to pay on bills. She would tell me, she would always want to be the boss. The divorce court continues. Just because you look better and you feel better about yourself doesn't mean that you have to change the nature of your relationship. You're still a married woman. You still can't run out with every time thinking, Harry, because you look better. Divorce court continues in the case of Elisa Denson, who says her husband Fred called her a hippo in front of their child. So it sounds like you got insecure because she lost weight and you became secure in who you were in, in terms of your appearance, but went about doing the wrong things about it. Just because you look better and you feel better about yourself doesn't mean that you have to change the nature of your relationship. You're still a married woman. You still can't run out with every Tom, Dick, and Harry because you look better. You're right. You still can't have sex with other men because you look better and feel better about yourself. You're right, but... But more importantly, you weren't really feeling better about yourself. Because if you did, you would have taken care of your body a little better, too. Not just losing weight. You wouldn't have misused your body by running out and having sex with other men when you, when you got a husband. You're right. But what's his excuse staying gone for three and four days at a time? When I call him... Because he couldn't deal with your weight loss. No, this is before the weight loss. This oh. was during the weight loss. I would call him. Are you coming home? Oh, um, 
I'll be there in about an hour, and I don't see him for a week. So both of you were irresponsible, cheating kind of people. I was working. Yeah, right. <laughs> but your wife didn't know it for three or four days. Now you want oh, yeah, child yeah. support. Who's working now? This child is, what, six years old? I'm working. Are you working? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Denson? Yeah, I'm working. Oh, so both of you, that's good. Let me give you a hint. The, the, the solution is not to go out and have sex and get pregnant to get even with somebody or for payback. That is not the answer, okay? Yes, ma'am. You have six children now? You're 36, is that right? Yes, ma'am. You don't need any more, okay? And you need, to, you need to take care of yourself, too. You stopped at one. All the little games you're playing, you're not really in control now. Let me tell you something. The different women that you're dealing with, you're not in control. They're in control. So far, the ones you've been with have chosen not to have a child. That's why you don't have but the one. But the minute they choose to have one, you'll have a heap of them, too. I, I ain't got time to... to you have to time for sex, you got time for children. Unless you take control. <laughs> Now, don't be stupid. So I'm going to order child support of $350 a month. That's the order of the court. Court's adjourned. All rise. Parties may leave the courtroom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, <laughs> that was interesting. I feel better about myself, and now that I feel better about myself, I'm gonna go run around and just have sex yeah. with everybody and anybody. I'm gonna I look use good this new good. body and punish you with it. Huh? She so used that new body to punish him. Get, get, what'd you say? Get back at him or get As even? As payback, that's payback. what she said. Yeah. I don't believe that my husband is sterile. I mean, I tell him I'm pregnant. He waits a few weeks later to tell me that he's sterile. My marriage is over with because there's no way this baby can be mine because she cheated on me and I can't have any kids because I believe I'm sterile. I don't even want this divorce now, but I, he is not healthy for me. I did not deserve this. So that's why I guess she goes out and have a one night stand with her cousin. How many me. times? So it don't matter. Uh oh, wait a minute now. So that's it. Don't hey, your honor, I what admit, about the one night stand I admit, with the cousin's friend? I was lonely, your honor. But wait a minute now. But <laughs> eight years this man had been. He don't even talk to me. He won't say bye to me when I go to work. He don't say hi to me when I come home. So you think that that justifies you going out to be with another man? And you say it's not mine. That's right. Why you say that, Mr. Mr. Crow? Because we've been together 11 years and I, we haven't had any kids and couldn't have any kids. All of a sudden, she goes out with a one night stand and comes up pregnant. It's kind of close. And use the condom. Lakeisha Crowell says she regrets having a one night stand, but she is sure the baby she is carrying is her husband Rick's. Now she wants him to pay her spousal support in today's session of Divorce Court. All rise. Court is now in session. Judge Maybelline Eve from presiding. You may be seated. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. This is the matter of Lukesha Kroll versus Rick Kroll. I'm advised that after eight years of marriage that you're divorcing. Mrs. Kroll, you're asking the court for spousal support. And Mr. Kroll says you're also pregnant and is not his child because he's sterile. Tell me, what's going on here? Uh, Your Honor, um, I got with this man over eight years ago because I was going through problems in my life through self-destruction, using drugs and everything. Um, he kind of, I had a house full of people that really didn't care about me. Uh, he like told me, you're too good of a person to be putting yourself through this. What type of drugs were you using? Crack. Crack cocaine? Yes, ma'am. And it's just destroying you? Yes, but I've been clean and sober for 11 years. Ooh, let's give you a hand on that. I am really glad to hear that, because look what a beautiful person you are. Thank you. And he helped you to realize that. I had very low self-esteem issues at that time. Mm -hmm. um, in that process, prior to us getting married, I lost my grandmother who raised me. And then a year later, I lost my mother. Mm. And he told me, if I ever used again, he would leave me. So I didn't use. And as goes far as him saying that he's sterile, I mean, he could have told me then. He could have told me 
all of other times before well, we How do we get fights. to the point of divorce when, when you have a man who was that sensitive, Cheating. who was that caring when you were at your lowest ebb? And I understand what crack cocaine does to people. I didn't mean it makes you a whole, a uh, totally different person. You don't care about anybody and anything but getting the crack cocaine. Exactly. Your and honor. here's a man that said, you know what? I can see the beauty in you. I can see what you have to offer. I can see that you're destroying yourself. And I love you enough that I'm not going to let you do that. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to help you. And I'm going to be there for you. Now, how do we get from a man like that to a divorce? Well, particularly because my husband can't, he, the, the adulterous affairs, the, I forgave him every time. This last time, I caught the girl in my house, saw her with my own eyes. He was still with her, still seeing her. In your house? In doing my what? house, in my house. When we married, he didn't have to buy me anything. He had already had a house. He uh, made me feel better about myself. I became self-sufficient. To What'd the point you start where to do? I, was, I became a nursing assistant. I went to school right. and became a nursing assistant. I surpassed him. You know, I tried to better myself. This man was even jealous of me reading books, okay? He was jealous of my friends. He chose my friends. I couldn't chew gum. I couldn't wear makeup. Why couldn't you wear makeup? Well, he, I don't know. Something about him, I think it's something when he was growing up or whatever, but he didn't like for me to wear lipstick and eyeliner and stuff like that. I guess it made, I don't know. Probably Honestly, because it en enhanced the natural beauty that you already had, and he knew that others would see that as well. Well, evidently, he, don't, he didn't want, it seemed toward the end that he didn't even want me, and he didn't want nobody else to want me. But I was very lonely. I, he would be in the house with me, totally ignore me. I would isolate myself in my room all the time. He used to say I slept all the time. Well, I worked third shift, 12-hour shifts. Constantly, always working. I took him on trips. When I got with this man, he had never even been on an airplane. So you, you did that for him? Yes. I took him places. I showed him things. You know, I love this man. This is the man I planned on dying with. Okay? I would imagine. Since he helped you live. <laughs> right. And I don't even want this divorce now. But I, he is it's not healthy for me to be with him. Because of his adultery. So maybe you thought, Mr. Kroll, since you helped her and since you say, you know, you were instrumental in her recovery oh, he and bringing out the lot. best in you that she owes you. And as a result, mm -hmm. she's now your slave and, mm -hmm. and you're her master and she has to do whatever you tell her to do. Is that what's going on in your head? No. What's going on? It really, I mean, it really wasn't what she was saying. I mean, the gum chewing... The only thing she did is chew gum real loud. It was annoying. And I ain't never said she couldn't chew gum. And I ain't never said she can wear makeup. It was just the lipstick. It just, she put so much on. I said, you don't have to put that much lipstick on with the makeup and so everything. So what were you trying to do? Teach her how to put it on modestly so she looked, so she looked like a lady as opposed to one of those women in the street? Because exactly. you probably did I mean, a little prostitution too, dealing with crack cocaine. Am I right or wrong? He was one of my best customers. Oh. No, I wasn't. So is that how it began? He was a customer? Yeah. We grew up in the same neighborhood. She stayed where she stayed. I stayed around the corner. So, what? I mean, that's kind of how we met. All right. Her grandparents was our paper, um, um, paper I was his people. paper girl yeah. for 10 years. So, that's how, you know. You were his paper girl? For 10 yeah. years. So, your grandfather had a paper business? My, me and my brother. He oh, was there. Oh, earned your little living early. Early. So, you learned good work ethics. Try. And then got caught up in the madness. Caught up. Well, thank God for the recovery. So, what broke this marriage down? What brought down to where we, why we're here today? Yeah. Well, she brought me here. But she says that you started seeing other women. She came home, you had a woman in, your, in the house. That's true, but when she came home that night, we wasn't doing anything. He didn't have what you doing? Fact, oh, oh, for the simple fact is... That night, what were you doing? What was the woman was doing at, at your house? She was at work. And for the simple fact, the reason I didn't do anything is no, not no, no, that no, I no. was. No, 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 Come on. She, you, <laughs> your wife was at work. Correct. The woman was at your house. Right. Why? Honestly, to tell you the truth, she just was stopping by because uh, she had to go to the bathroom. Oh, and no. Hold on. And I would never do nothing because when the girl, when the woman came on, her friend was sitting outside the one and called her from on her cell phone to tell her to come flying home because something was going on. When divorce court continues. He don't even talk to me. He won't say bye to me when I go to work. He don't say hi to me when I come home. So you think that that justified you going out to be with another man? Is your marriage ending because your spouse is too controlling? Call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at www.divorcecourt.com. 
Divorce Court continues in the case of Lakeisha Crowell, who says she caught her husband Rick with another woman in their house. So I'm this a... is a friend of your wife's, a friend of both of you? I don't know this girl. Oh. No, the girl she don't know, but her friend, the one that well, seen the girl. Well, why, why is a woman coming by your house that your Thank wife you. doesn't know at night when your wife is at work and she just happened to stop by to use the bathroom? She couldn't go to the local service station and use the bathroom? She probably could have, but what I'm saying is... Um, what, you I offer free nothing. toilet services or something? <laughs> In my bathroom. That was Grand Station Central. But you had cleaned it up, you Thank said. Thank you. Well, that was... Yeah, I cleaned up all from... Except for girls. I cleaned up all the drugs and stuff, but everybody still came over from the neighborhood and everything, so... Okay, so, this... but this wasn't a girl from the neighborhood. Your wife said you yeah, should've known her. Just, I she don't know her. She, met, she didn't know her, but she lived around Excuse in the neighborhood. Excuse me, Your Honor, so. this child is a child the same age as my son. No, she's not. And what age might that be? 20, if not younger. He likes them young, Your Honor. Uh, every girl he has cheated on me with was be under 21. Oh, okay, so... And I've always... Whatever. Said, so whatever. Why, come on now, Lenny finished telling me that she was yeah, there to yeah. use the bathroom. So how, so how long did it take her to use the bathroom? It didn't, it didn't take her long, I mean... <laughs> And so, was... how long did it take your wife to get home from work when the person, when the neighbor called her across the street and said, hey, you better get her home? Friend, oh, she no, called, her too. Friend was, her friend was in the car sitting in front of the house. Okay. And called from a cell phone. I mean, I right. wasn't going to... And your wife was at work. Right. Mm -hmm. Which means she was away from the house. Mm -hmm. Correct. All right. Now, she had to get home, right? Right. How long did it take her to get home? Probably about 10 minutes. No. So, that woman was in the bathroom minutes. going peeing for 10 no, minutes? No, no, we just went... No, we just... Ma'am, Your Honor, when I walked in the house, the child was sitting on my couch. Wait a minute, now I'm trying to finish. So your wife home and the lady's still there? Yeah. She hadn't finished using the restroom yeah, all that time? Yeah, she had finished, yeah, but we was just down there talking. That was it. Because I wasn't going to do nothing knowing her friend was outside. When she pulled up, her friend was already sitting in the car, so I wasn't going to do nothing regardless because her friend was out there. And so, I knew. so what you're telling me then is that the friend sitting outside, and when you opened the door for the woman, looked out and realized, uh-oh, there goes Nosy on the phone. Excuse me. Hold on. You said, oh, wow, I'm busted. I can't get it on tonight. <laughs> no, you, Well, I you said it. that's why I didn't do anything, because the friend was outside. I mean, I wouldn't have done nothing regardless. That's man. not what you said. I wasn't going to do nothing with So, her. in other words, your wife broke it up. When the friend saw her, your wife got home, she stopped the action. Yes. Well, what the hell did so we I nothing... said she blocked the action. She stopped it before it started. But had she not come home and had the friend not been sitting outside spying on you, <laughs> then we're, we're talking another story, right? Come on now, don't try to fool me. I ain't trying to I'm fool you. Me neither. At least you dig be as honest. Now, weren't you about to go there, but the action got stopped? <laughs> And it wasn't just her. It's the other ones, too. I forgave him, Your Honor. I forgave him numerous times. I did not deserve this. So that's why I guess she goes out and have a one-night stand with her cousin. How friend. many times? So it don't matter. Uh oh, what? wait a minute now. So let's, it don't let, matter. It, it, Your Honor, I What admit, about the one-night stand admit, with the cousin's friend? I admit, I did have an affair, okay? Okay. And I admit it was So wrong. why did you have one? I was lonely, Your Honor. She couldn't have been. But wait a minute now, but <laughs> eight years this man had been... He don't even talk to me. He won't say bye to me when I go to work. He don't say hi to me when I come home. He's usually gone when I come home at 6.30 in the morning up at a high school for AM practices and stuff like that. Like, I'm supposed to believe that. He's at games all the time. He's High school games? High school games. We don't, have no help, children help. we don't have no children in high school. When Divorce Court Continues... That was an insult to you to ask you to go and take a test to see if your Basically. sperm count was low. So now that insult has to remain because now it's an insult to your wife. If you would like to have the judge hear your case in divorce court, call us toll free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at www.divorcecourt.com. Divorce Court continues in the case of Lakeisha Crowell, who admits she had a one-night stand because her husband, Rick, ignored her. So why are you hanging out at the local high school helped, so much? I help um, coach the, the Liberty High School basketball team. And in the mornings, they have early morning practices so in the evenings. So do you work? When do you work? <laughs> I work, um, I work third shift when I was working for the airport. But you're How not long? working anymore. 
Yeah, I still work. How long? So when do you go to work? If you got time to be at practicing in the mornings and practicing in the evening? Because evenings. I didn't the work games. every day. Uh, my work hours from was from three in the evening. And sometimes I went over because I drove for an airport service. So so because he was Ooh. doing this, you decided to go out with somebody else? Your Honor, my husband worked for that airport service. He was gone two weeks straight, 24 hours a no, day. No, I wasn't. And when no, the I airport wasn't. service taking people back and forth back to the and airport, no, and he slept no. there, and he said claims he slept there because I was too tired to go get him and stuff like that. It was to the point where I stopped him from using my car because he was with these girls. She's and lying. on top of you that, your honor, to... so, so you think that that justified you going out to be with no another man? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. It does I know not. You know and better. I beg for forgiveness, and I regret it to this day. So what pray. happened with you out with this other man? I was lonely. He took me out. I had a few drinks. So you guys just went straight to bed? Yes, we did. That's what it was all about. Basically, he's in a relationship, and I was in a relationship. It was just a Now, moment. you are married. Exactly. And I regretted it. So it was just a sex call? Basically. And she come mm. up pregnant behind it. And now you're pregnant? Not by him. How many months are you pregnant? Three months. And when did this incident occur? Christmas Eve. Whoa. Christmas Eve. Getting awfully close. <clears throat> and you say it's not mine. That's right. Why do you say that, Mr. Mr. Kroll? Because we've been together 11 years and I, we haven't had any kids and couldn't have any kids. And all of a sudden, she goes out with a one night stand and comes up pregnant. Your so you and, you and your wife have been together for 11, 11 years, years total. Correct. 11 and years. she's never been pregnant? Never. And do you have any children anywhere else? No. Mm. You've never fathered any children? No. He never got tested to see if this child is his and it's 11 years old. No. So to your knowledge, though, you never had, you don't have any children no anywhere? No children, no. And what about your sterility? Have you been tested for that? No. So why do you say you're sterile? Because we haven't had any kids in It's the like way seven. we have sex, Rick. And, well, uh, you know, because the, you haven't had any kids in 11 years and you've been together. Now, that has something to do with both of you. Mm -hmm. Because, basically, you can't control it anyway. Unless you're using some type of contraceptive like a condom or something, you don't have any control over whether you have a child or not. So it may be that Mrs. Crow was having some problems in terms of pregnancy as well. You don't know who the, where the problem lies. Um, but now she's pregnant. I was going to fertility doctors in the beginning of the relationship because his mother pressured. It wasn't really pressure. So you were having problems too? Yes, I was getting tested for it. And it came to the point where it came for his test and he refused to take it. I was, I mean, these tests aren't, aren't So why pleasant. do you take the fertility test? Fertility he refused. Test. Yeah, why do you take the test to see if there was something wrong with your sperm? In the your beginning sperm count of the relationship. Low. Well, that was the beginning because I didn't feel it. That's I not my problem. I, That's not my question. Why didn't you take the test? Because I didn't want to. So then that means that you don't believe that there's any problems. Correct. That was an insult to you to ask you to go and take a test to see if your Basically. sperm count was low. So now that insult has to remain because now it's an insult to your wife. Thank you. That may very well not be, though. It is. It's kind of close. I used the condom. You used the condom when you had the outside effect. Yes, I did. The divorce court continues. You're high-risk pregnancy. I know it, but I gotta work. And if your doctor says you can go... I'm and going to get some medical food. advice because I gotta support myself. Divorce Court continues in the case of Rick Crowell, who says his wife cannot be pregnant by him because he is sterile. So who's working now? I'm working. How but... About, I, but I'm on LOA because I'm a high-risk pregnancy. I can't work. Is that work. leave of absence? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I can't work my job. I'm fighting with them to try and go back to work because that one controlled my health insurance and his health insurance. Aren't you a CNA? Yes, ma'am. And you're on a high-risk pregnancy? Yes, ma'am. Now, who's going to let you come work for them? I would. Well, I got another job that... that they're, you're they let high like pregnancy. Duty. I know it, but I gotta work. And if your doctor says you can go and I'm apply going for against disability. medical advice because I gotta support myself. Go apply for disability. <laughs> I try. You're entitled to social security disability during your pregnancy if you're unable to work as a result of your pregnancy. Go and that. apply for it. All right? Yes, ma'am. That's a, that's a law. If you're unable to work due to pregnancy, apply for disability. All right? Your wife is pregnant. It's a high-risk pregnancy. She's not going to be able to work very long, if at all. Usually, you have to be bedridden. I suppose to be. All right? You married her eight years ago. You did the right thing. Well, she you... come up pregnant. 
when you she know, went on and had her one night stand. Well, so. you don't know when she became pregnant. You don't know that. If she's three months pregnant, and that was December 24th, is when she had the one night stand, by my calculations, is yours. Yeah. No. Well, you it don't happened. know. The point is, Ms. In- Mr. Crow, you don't know. And there is an assumption under the law that a woman who becomes pregnant during marriage, that her husband is the father of that child unless and until you rebut that presumption. Now, when this child is born, you can take a DNA test. All right? Mm -hmm. But until then, I presume that you're the father because the law is in the favor of that. And based upon that fact, she's not going to be able to work. You're her husband. You're going to have to support her. So the order of the court is going to be that you give her support of, let's see, $300 per month between April and October. You make $2,000 per month. The order will be $500 per month. And then when you go back to working uh, the limousine or whatever else, you're going to go back to the $300 per month until further order of court. And that's the order of the court. Court's adjourned. Thank you, y'all. All Take rise. care of yourself. Thank you. Parties may leave the courtroom. See, that's, that's unfortunate. That's a really unfortunate situation there. Yeah. Because sometimes when we do things for people that are down and out, mm-hmm. we think that they owe us. Yeah. And not I only do you, they so now I control you. Right. And not only do they owe us, but that you can do anything to them yeah. and treat them any kind of way because that's the way they're used to being treated. When mm-hmm. they were treated badly before and allowed men to treat them badly, right. when they were disrespected before and allowed men to dis- disrespect them. And I tell people that all the time. You send out a message mm-hmm. and you say it to people, I don't care. I'm the kind of person you can mistreat, you can abuse, you can do right. wrong. And sometimes when we get off into relationships and you've had that past, there are men or women who will say, I can continue to do that. Mm-hmm. And it's okay even, for me to mistreat okay you, but for nobody me. else. Right. <laughs>